Ну що, весь світ знає Україну. Оце ми йдемо нашою ходою і всі рукоплещуть просто тому, що тут є українці. Світ знає Україну, світ розуміє, що Україна потребує допомоги, світ розуміє, що Україна врешті переможе. От з цією думкою, з цим відчуттям я пройшов всі ці 6 кілометрів ходи. Виснажений, емоційно заряджений, але щасливий, що це сталося. But what really inspired me is our group. We had like uh, 70 suits, and I mean the heroes of the Pride Parade, LGBT people, they were like in minority in this group, 30 percent, and they were like so open and so loud and so visible on that Pride Parade. And I'm really glad for them that their first Pride Parade in their life was the World Pride, not just a regular Pride, but the World One. Від, від прайдів в Україні цей прайд відрізняється звичайно масштабом. Він, він ну, в тисячі, навіть в мільйони раз більше, ніж те, що в нас було. Але це раз, е, є і перспектива для нас. Те, що, те, те, до чого ми повинні колись прийти. Impression. I think it's very amazing feeling. Of course, I'm a little bit tired uh, as well. But, you know, uh, I felt myself, I, I felt very good, very uh, impressed and very, um, I don't know. You know, it's, it's, it's a feeling when uh, you feel a lot of energy around you, a, a lot of a lot of kindness, a lot of uh, support, so it was, it, it, it was quite amazing. Why um, um, do they cancel the parade and uh, we go there by car to this place, a little bit outside the city center and I, I uh, said to Stas, I will, I, will, uh, I will see the place, I will, I will go there and then I meet Volker back and I, I said to him, we will, we will have a demonstration here, what should happen here and Stas said to us, come, come, it's a dangerous um, to remain here and when um, we went back and then we saw all these people from the right wing and all these people coming on both sides of the streets this um, religious groups and also this Kozakten groups and maybe thousand people and they, want, they were on the way to this place where the demonstration should be, our demonstration should be and um, to demonstrate against us. Свобода є і була, і залишиться для українців великою цінністю, для українців і для українок. І оця свобода, саме вона лежала в основі ідеї проведення прайду. Прайд – це є подія для спільноти ЛГБТ, ЛГБТ – це є частина суспільства. І всі права і свободи людини, вони є універсальні, ними мають користуватися всі. 
Тому ми свого часу започаткували в нашій країні, в Україні, в місті Києві ідею проведення прайду. Прайду як події, яка ставить на порядок денний права і свободи людини. 12-го року, 2012-го року ми вперше намагалися це зробити. Ви бачили на кадрах відео, яке демонструвалося щойно, побиття. В Україні, на жаль, великий рівень ненависті, градус ненависті, градус агресії. Ця агресія є і щодо гомосексуалів, щодо інших соціальних груп, до приїжджих, до мігрантів, до людей іншого віросповідання тощо, на жаль. So Ukrainians, they have very peaceful mentality. And if Ukrainians are going to a physical fight, this is incredible. This is incredible. And that's why the one person we had beaten up on the Kiev Pride, this was like, uh, I don't know, 100 people beaten up in the country where violence is more like common. Surprises, bad surprises in Kiev because um, first we had this meeting outside the city and I thought, why? Why is it necessary to have this, this meeting outside the city? It was because of protection, protection for the people and it was very, it, for me, it, I couldn't understand. I couldn't, first I couldn't understand, then I, I understood why, and then the Kiev Pride was, and the parade was, the demonstration was, because it, it wasn't, because um, you have to, uh, to cancel it. The first Kiev Pride, it was a very amazing experience for, for all of us, because only a few of the LGBT leaders was involved in this organizing because others uh, didn't believe that it's possible in, in, in Ukraine. Uh, and, uh, but for me, it was a successful pride. Uh, of course, maybe you know that uh, we couldn't uh, hold this march, but in any case, it was a very successful event because whole community and whole society, Ukrainian, uh, could see that it's possible to organize something and the discussion about LGBT uh, was raised up. To visualize it, imagine that you are in a box and you are just restricted with these walls. And these walls are just the garden of the police that just tries to protect you from the thousands of haters. That was our pride in 2013 when we were like Martian 500 meters in a box that police made for us from their buses. But that was our demonstration. I mean, the whole country and the world saw that we exist in Ukraine and they saw our requirements, our needs, our thoughts. So we had a chance to show it to Ukraine and to the world. And we are grateful for this. The big way begins from the small step. When I describe my feelings about participating in Kiev Pride, it's like um, a whole roller coaster. <laughs> we were picked up by police buses sitting there with the Munich community and the mayor of Munich. And uh, we watched each other and were not really happy, we were happy, but we didn't know what will happen now. Where is the venue? Will it be a stadium uh, closed for the public? Will it be on some public street? And then the police buses started through the city, like in zigzag, to irritate everybody potentially following us. And it was so, 
I don't know, like, I, I never have lived something similar. It was an adventure. I felt important. <laughs> I felt um, cared for all the time. But it was like you never could say, will it happen something? Then they dropped us at the uh, very venue. This is a, was a public street uh, right to a park. And they pushed us to go in line, five people, uh, one after another. And there was much discipline. It must have been fast. It was like they were shouting at everybody to, to, to be disciplined. Yeah? And so I was watching, and there were about 1,500 policemen. This gave much impression to everybody of us because it is so, I don't know, it's like in a, in a fortress. You felt protected, but also you saw it's really dangerous to be here. <laughs> and I was not in the first front line. Uh, my colleagues from Munich took a, took a banner, a plastic banner, saying, um, Munich welcomes its twin city, Kiev. And uh, then came some Ukrainian activists in, front, in the front line. So we were standing there, and then we started our 300 meters march, not very long. And they were shouting something, and then uh, all of a sudden, all these journalists came, like hundreds of them, and like you know, it was not c controlled. It was just like a vague coming, and they were asking questions. They were deceived because we didn't speak Ukrainian or Russian. But they asked us too about why do you protect lesbian and gays? Are you lesbian or gay too? And they were really shocked that we were le lesbian and gay people too. And we explained them that it's not a choice, that it's something which you are born with. And they were surprised and learned. And well, actually, they were very friendly. And the sun was shining, and we felt really safe all the time. And then we start wa started walking, and they were shouting the slogans. And I felt really, really proud. I had to cry, too. It's just very touching, even still now, after two years. I thought, this is a really big step for the LGBT community. And never, no way it can't go back because this is an achievement. And yeah, we were walking, and there were some attacks from, I don't know, nationalistic people breaking into, breaking the police lines, and they were taking banners from us, and they were aggressive, but police jumped on them. And uh, you felt like in a movie. <laughs> and in the end, everything went fine. We were brought to the buses back, another zigzag tour to the hotel, and we were very happy to be safe at home. We felt very proud, and we were brave people together with our Ukrainian friends. Yeah, 2013 was a very, uh, what's absolutely uh, a different experience because uh, uh, the Kiev Pride must not be cancelled, but it, it works and, and, and uh, it was possible um, to help this, uh, this parade, but only, only because of the international uh, supporting, the international, not only the Munich supporting, the international supporting, and it was the mayor of Munich was there and a lot of um, personal from embassy were there and from the European Parliament and that I think that was the reason this international uh, supporting um, that they uh, protect that um, um, the mayor, uh, Lord Mayor of Kiev or the Parliament that they protect this um, parade and the Kiev Pride but it was a little bit uh, it was a little bit a very special experience because we were there and when um, um, they put us in into uh, into these buses, the small buses, and where a police car was in front of us with a siren, siren, and um, and they um, brought us to outside of Kiev to this place, uh, the small street, and when we went out, we went out very 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 fast, and um, we had this parade and protected with 2,000 uh, policemen, maybe 2,000 policemen. We were 50 people or 80 people, and. Um, and when we had this um, parade, maybe ten, no, half an hour, maybe half an hour, and then uh, we went back in this in these buses, and they brought us back into the city center. So it was, I know it was a big success.
It was a big success for the LGBT community in Kiev. Kiev Pride 2013 was supported by many people from abroad, not only activists but uh, politicians, especially from the European Union. There was also some member of the German Embassy. And uh, weeks before the Pride took place, all the European Union embassies put so much pressure on the authorities in Kiev to protect this venue. Um, so I think this was a very important, a very important step. Otherwise, without the support of the Western, Western side, there would have been no Kiev pride. Because the Ukrainian government felt obligated to do it and to protect it. And they did it really well, I must say. In Kiev, we had the partnership. Uh, we are partner cities, and um, these partner cities must um, must be full of life, and it wasn't. And so, uh, this project, Munich Kiev, um, uh, supporting LGBT human rights, um, is a very, very good and a successful. Now it's a very good and successful project, and so I thought in three years ago that it would be um, good for Munich and also good for Kiev to support um, LGBT rights and not only f uh, doing something for for people in Kiev, also doing something for people in Munich. Yeah. The activists we invited to sp to speak loud here uh, during Munich Pride in 2012. They touched all the Munich community by their stories and people were so desperate about the situation in Ukraine that they decided we have to do something. So um, only some weeks later, like in October or November 2012, I think, um, three people started to create this contact group, which is called Munich Kiev Queer, and we gathered some women and men all over the Munich LGBT community and uh, started to mobilize all Munich community, all the groups and associations that exist to work together on this one goal to help improve human rights situation for LGBT in Ukraine. After 2013, we built this corporation Munich Kiev Queer, and we worked together. And um, the city of Munich, um, the city of Munich financed this. Indeed, we are now about 15 people um, from not only from Munich but also from Odessa and Kiev. Mainly, this is the twin city of Munich, and <coughs> the focus of our work has two sides: it's uh, political. On the other hand, we try to build, help building community in Ukraine. So we do a lot of cultural work. I mean, like exhibitions in Kiev, Odessa, or Munich about LGBT destinies, or um, volunteers' workshops for Ukrainian activists. They learn how uh, Munich's community works with only volunteers and how it works. So scientific exchange, cultural work, we also do a lot of PR and political actions. And we are supported by the city of Munich, the city council. So we have financial support and a political backup for this, what we do. Um, and so together with the, with the group, with Munich Kiev, Queer, we can do a lot. We can do a lot. Maybe it can be an example for other cities. Maybe it can be an example for Toronto, because it's also a partner city of Kiev.
you've only been in Canada for a few days now. Uh, what 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 is your your kind of experience so far? It's a great experience, already great. Yeah, but because we just were hanging around and watching all these preparations for the World Pride we have here, and this is this is amazing to have these flags everywhere, to have this, we support you, we support you, we support you. Everybody supports gay people here, and this is really amazing. This is what we want to have in our country. Maybe not tomorrow, of course, in many, many, many years, but, but it will be, we believe in it, and that's why we just step by step doing the things we're doing in Ukraine. And Catherine, you are uh, the self-described catalyst of uh, what's happening right now. Could you could you tell us a little bit about how you got involved in uh, these four amazing people and uh, the whole idea of bringing them here for World Pride? Chris, honestly, when I was standing there at an Elton John concert two years ago, and uh, I had no idea that it would lead to the journey that we're on right now. Um, he stopped. He looked at the crowd and I mean it was the night before the Euro Cup so everybody was watching mm -hmm. and he said but recently I read the people who are gay in Ukraine have been beaten up and is wrong and that doesn't mean to me symbolize Ukraine Ukraine is a good place Ukraine is a good place and I remember standing there thinking what is he talking about? because I didn't know. And so, you know, I looked on the internet and I saw images of, of Slava, of Svetoslav, and I couldn't believe it because it, I lived there for five years, but it was, it was a serious hate crime. Yeah. And it was something that, that I had not been aware of for the time that I lived in Ukraine. Uh, so, look, I just believe that there are moments in your life when you make decisions and you don't know how it's how things are going to happen, but for whatever reason, I believe that Slav and I were meant to meet, and uh, he inspired me so much. And here we are, two years later, and I feel like this journey is just beginning. I'm very excited to have them here with us, and I can't imagine what's going to happen in the next several days and what kind of connections will be made and what how this ripple is going to spread yeah so I just want to say Slava you're my hero and I and you really inspired me and uh, thank you for rising above hatred and making a difference for Ukraine and for the world talk to us about what the situation is like for gays and lesbians in Ukraine right now well I want to uh, uh, greet the public in Canada because we are really great. Uh, it's great to be here and uh, to greet all people who gathered for the World Pride because we are here to show the world the situation we have in Kyiv and in Ukraine now and the situation in our country for LGBTQ rights is not so good, it's not so well as we want it to be now. And in Kyiv Pride we really want to show our country that we are fighting for the human rights with the whole country because our country for now is fighting for the freedom also. I want to bring in Slava into this if I can as well uh, because he of course went through this firsthand uh, and, and sort of knows uh, how vicious this can become. Slava, when this happened to you, uh, you now find yourself here in Canada for World Pride. Your country, Ukraine, is very much at a crossroads now as to which way it will go, towards Europe or perhaps back into the Russian orbit. What is your uh, impression, your thought on that? Today is a time of choice for Ukraine. Це принциповий час, коли ми вибираємо, коли далі нам іти. So we need to choose which way we need to go. І суспільство на революції вже сказало своє слово. Ми йдемо до європейської атлантичної цивілізації. And Ukrainian society during the revolution in Ukraine, uh, we already said us we are going for European civilization to the West civilization. Цей вибір зроблено українським народом під час революції гідності. 
the choice was made by Ukrainian people during the revolution. І LGBTQ спільнота є частиною українського народу, і цей вибір є вибір спільноти LGBT в Україні. And the LGBT in Ukraine is a part of Ukrainian people, so that's our common choice. For people in Ukraine, for now, it is really, really important to have human rights for all groups of the, in society. That's why for now, for example, for the Kyiv Pride, the Pride that we will have in the beginning of July, for this Pride, today, we have much more supporters from the whole society, not only from LGBTQ community. You guys are all going to be part of what's going on in Toronto over the next couple of days, including the World Pride Parade coming up on Sunday. I want to know what Slava feels about being able to be a part of that, to be in the parade. What do you feel about how it will be a part of the parade of the World Pride? Ukraine is a part of the world. The Ukrainian community is a part of the world LGBT community. So we are trying to make our own choice here in the Pride Parade in Toronto. Ukraine is a part of the world, and Ukrainian society and Ukrainian LGBTQ uh, community is a part of the whole community in the world. That's why we are really proud to be here and to present our country and to present Kyiv Pride on the World Pride. Міжнародне значення це дуже важливо, по-перше, з точки зору того, що український голос може бути почутий на таку на, на заході такого високого міжнародного рівня, по-перше. І по-друге, це також важливо в контексті з подіями, які зараз відбуваються в Україні, тому що, в принципі, зараз увага світу прикута до України, і, і зараз це дуже унікальна можливість доносити ідеї необхідності захисту прав людини. Тому що, в принципі, і у е, спільноти правозахисників є зараз дуже, дуже, дуже гарна можливість, тому що Україна зараз обрала євроінтеграційний напрямок, Україна вже визначилась зі своїм напрямком, і це дуже важливо. І уч, участь української делегації в заході так, такого рівня, в принципі, це дуже гарна нагода ще раз донести цю ідею, що Україна – це частина цивілізованого світу, що Україна – це частина Європи, і Україна обрала with World Pride, we just wanted Ukraine to have a voice. We thought Ukraine has to be at this table and um, the Ukrainian voices have to be heard. And that's what we're doing here. So I can't imagine. <laughs> no, but I, I can't imagine. I mean, imagine Ukraine not at the Pride Parade. Imagine Ukraine not at the Human Rights Conference. Imagine Ukraine not having any kind of a delegation. Вітаю канадців, вітаю наших колег. Україна постала як незалежна 91-го року, а з 93-го вже постав український ЛГБТ-рух. Це рух за права ЛГБТ, звичайно, так само, як і повсюди в світі. А, і зараз ми маємо на Україні вже 42 ЛГБТ-організації, які працюють для того, щоб всім геям, лесбійкам, бісексуалам, трансгендерам добре жилося. Ось тут, у цій країні, в Канаді, ми бачимо свято життя. Свято життя абсолютно для всіх. Кожна людина захищена, до кожної людини є повага, кожна людина має свою гідність. В Україні, на жаль, ще не так. Отже, ми маємо чого повчитися тут, щоб зробити на Україні життя кращим. Тому ми на прайді. How does it feel like to be in Toronto for World Pride? Yeah, it's amazing. I think it's quite 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 good event international. It's it's very it's very good opportunity and good, very good time to be here. How does this uh, compare to Pride in Kiev? Oh my God! It is impossible even even to compare because in in, in uh, Pride in Kiev we have m maximum 100, 100 people because it, sometimes it's quite dangerous to be in Pride in Kiev. But here is million million people. What kind of danger are you talking about? Yeah, it is, you you just can be beaten there or even if, even 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 something worse because Ukraine is quite homophobic country and sometimes it's. Uh, 
to be open gay is quite dangerous there. So we're here to support the delegates' uh, human rights that came from Ukraine, from Kiev. We're here to support them and show that uh, we are not afraid. We're Ukrainian uh, society overall is not homophobic, and especially here in Toronto, it's important for them to be represented and have voice. We also knew about the fact that the delegates from Ukraine І для мене це дуже є дуже важливим підтримати цих людей, адже вони зараз знаходяться в країні, в нашій країні, в якій Росія має великий контроль над, над Україною. І цей контроль також, в принципі, його видно і в тому, що Росія є страна гомофо, гомофобів. І ми не хочемо, щоб в нашій країні це було, ми хочемо свободи. І я хочу, щоб ці люди, так само, як вони вільно себе можуть сьогодні експрес, щоб вони могли в Україні так само вільно працювати, виходити, казати, що навіть на роботі скрізь, що це я є, ким я є, я хочу, щоб мене за це поважали. I felt pride, exhilaration. Um, I was moved. I was just present to all the love and support. There's nothing like it. I mean, I, would, I knew it was going to be mind-blowing. I knew it was going to be something expect, uh, really exceptional. But to walk down and have a million or two well-wishers literally beaming acceptance and love and cheering you, it's indescribable. This is not my first time that I'm walking in parade, uh, Pride Parade. Uh, but this one is unlike any I've ever had before because I never thought I would see in such a soon, short time, uh, Ukrainians uh, walking, not only Ukrainians, Ukrainian Canadians, but Ukrainians from Ukraine walking down Toronto's uh, street uh, on Pride Day. I felt totally at peace and good, like um, just as we walked by, Complete strangers from all nationalities were like, hey, Ukraine, Ukraine, and um, just a slapping of hands and um, just connectedness of people uh, during this day, the dropping all their fighting and whatever, and everybody came together to support Pride. And if people, I think if people around the world could mimic the way Pride works, I think we can maybe work together better. To Maxim, to Ross, to Elena, and to Slava, welcome to Canada, welcome to World Pride. I hope that was as mind-blowing for you as it was for me to walk down that street and see so many people. You could just see it happen as, as people would, they, they were kind of quiet and then they would read the flag and go, Ukraine, yeah, like that. <laughs> and it was like they were just there to support you guys. And I hope you felt all the love and the warmth and how much it was appreciated not just um, you know for all of us, but also for Canadians to be standing at the side of the of the road and cheering you on. It really meant a lot to them that you were here too. I've said it many, many times, and I'll say it again. We are so lucky to live in Canada for people that have never traveled outside of Canada to see that equality is not equal, and that rights are not just handed out. Thank you. Thank you for giving us uh, an example, you know, uh, an example how it could actually be and how people just uh, do the things better in their own countries. You know, in every uh, Western country where we uh, were lucky to be, to see prides, to see how people organize work with LGBT community and fighting for their rights, you know, every uh, piece of this experience is important for us to make our own work, our own this way, yeah, better and more successful. And this year, uh, our Pride Week, it's very special because uh, we are together, not, not only LGBT activists, but also we are together with uh, human rights defenders and other, other organizations from mainstream, mainstream human rights uh, defenders. So it's, it's, it's quite good. And I'm very disappointed. I'm really disappointed because Kyiv authorities 
just showed us that we are still not respected in this country. And this is a shame for our country. That's all I can say now. I have many emotions and all these emotions are negative. And I was dreaming about the good pride for us, the good pride that we could make in our new country after the revolution. But today we see that this revolution was not for us. And that's a shame. Я чрезвычайно разочарован тем, что украинская власть, та власть, которую украинский народ привел на престол, та, тот народ, частью которого мы являемся, одним из первых своих шагов избрала э, нарушение прав человека, нарушение совершенно базовых прав на свободу самовыражения, на свободу собраний. Я чрезвычайно разочарован тем, что новая украинская мэрия, киевская мэрия, которую возглавил один из потенциальных кандидатов президента, один из тех, кто стоял вместе с людьми на Евромайдане, один из тех, на кого люди возлагали большие надежды, а именно боксер Кличко. Я чрезвычайно разочарован тем, что тот человек, музей успехов которого находится здесь, на втором этаже, начал свое правление с того, что он показал свою слабость. У Кличко оказалось, что у него нет яиц. К сожалению, это так. Насколько он был слаб на Майдане, настолько он оказался слабым и в кресле правителя. For me it was a very painful um, experience because I thought and I had hope that um, the new government and the new Ukrainian government and the new Lord Mayor of Kiev will not support or a little bit, only a little bit support and will, he will protect us. He must not support us that he that he um, um, that he is in front of that, that he will be in front of the of the Kiev but like the Lord Mayor in in Munich. Uh, um, so, but that he will protect us, and he did nothing. He said, you know, he said, uh, this is not the time for party. And I thought, oh my God, you are so stupid. That it's not the, uh, it's not a party. It's a demonstration for human rights. Yeah. It was cancelled because our uh, mayor and city council, they had like two main points. First point, this is a quote from our mayor Klitschko, and uh, we already have a very negative reaction from our European colleagues about this quote. Yeah, so he actually said that there is not a time for celebration in Kiev, in Ukraine. So he just think that uh, fight for LGBT rights is a celebration. And the second part of the reaction was that they will never be able to protect us with police forces. That police forces in Ukraine for now can't protect people from aggressive haters with weapons in their arms. So that was directly said to us. And actually, our uh, Equality March department inside the uh, organizational committee, they decided, based on this uh, decisions of Kiev City Council, they decided to cancel the march because of security reasons. So we weren't really deceived uh, that it didn't take place um, because we everybody understood the difficult security situation. But we were pr really proud too and happy to participate. When the Pride March was cancelled, 
uh, there were like a group of people who were are really not satisfied with this decision and people who were like brave enough just to anyway stand up on the street and to like tease this homophobes with our flags yes and our right saying out loud yeah so we gathered a group about 35 30 35 people well and i'm proud to say that uh, our supporters from germany were also there so you know they were so brave even despite understanding how dangerous was it they were with us you know and we had uh, our posters with us and we had uh, this rainbow balloons and uh, actually the idea was just to march like 20 meters and then to stay in one line and to shout the rights that we want to have and then put balloons out to the sky yeah standing right under the uh, so-called the arc of friendship between peoples yeah among <laughs> peoples yes so and this arc is like a you know, like i don't know people just call it rainbow arc because in the night it has like colored uh, the slides on it yeah, so this is a very famous place in Kyiv and it is situated, um, I don't know, 300, 500 meters to Maidan, so really very close to Maidan, but you know, as Tara said, it was very, very dangerous, but it was our passion to do it and that's why we gathered such a small group of people. <laughs> Равенство, глобальная солидарность, свобода, равенство, глобальная солидарность, свобода, равенство, глобальная солидарность, свобода, равенство, глобальная солидарность. In this moment I did not feel that it is dangerous for me or for the group. In this moment I felt um, we have to do it. It's important for us. It's important for us and it's important for our friends in Kiev that, uh, that they show that they have the possibility to show um, their demonstration. That, uh, they were there for, for this demonstration and they couldn't do it because uh, of this, that they had to cancel it. So, and it was so, so important for them that they uh, did this flash mob. I think it's awesome. I, I got a huge smile on my face when I heard about it and part of me was almost like, you know what, good for them. A, talk about showing some massive amount of courage because they had no protection at all. And they said, you know what, you can't tell us we can't do this. You know, okay, maybe you won't protect us, but guess what? We'll do it our way. And we're, we're just going to show, they, they, got, they got to do it where they wanted to do it, in the center of the city. They showed up, they did their thing, and they went away. And just before all the skinheads and homophobes got wind of it and showed up there to, you know, they were too late. There was, there was nobody to beat up by the time they, had, by the time they arrived. And, um, you know, the real people in Kiev got to see it uh, in, instead of these crazies that follow them around. And it was interesting where they the spot that they picked, you know, it's this, it looks almost like it's a friendship arch between Ukraine and Russia. Unbelievable. And, um, but it looks like a rainbow. If you actually colored it in rainbow colors, it looks like the, the arch of a rainbow. And so I think it's just perfect that they picked that spot. В той самий день, 5 липня, коли був призначений марш рівності в Києві, ввечері було скоєно напад на один зі столичних гей-клубів. Його назва – Помада. Він розташований безпосередньо біля Хрещатику, біля Майдану Незалежності. 
група людей в камуфляжі і в масках чисельністю до 10-15 осіб закинула довгий клуб димову шашку, намагалася увірватися всередину. На щастя, ніхто не постраждав, бо клуб оперативно зачинив свої броньовані двері і все це минулося. Але сам факт того, що цей напад стався в день, коли було призначено марш рівності, говорить про серйозні агресивні настрої в суспільстві проти будь-яких акцій ЛГБТ. That Ukrainians fought on Euromaidan for European Western values, for, for liberal inclusive values. And LGBTQ values are just exactly that. And it's a perfect example of it. So if after that, you know, these values are not respected and are not protected, then what was it all about? They went back with a whole worldwide community. And um, I hope they know that. I think they do. Uh, you know that for Ukrainian LGBT movement, crucial, important is this international support and international solidarity. So each uh, act of international support, international assistance for us, it's very important. It's a very, very, very big point for us. We have to support it. We have to support it and, and that Kiev and the, uh, the LGBT community in Kiev needs our support. Not only, not only support from Munich, more support. Common goal, you know, just to make Ukraine so, uh, you know, not Western, not European, <coughs> but uh, took from West, from Europe, from uh, all the West, we have like an example, the best you have. Yeah, so for us, it's first of all tolerance and uh, first of all human rights thing yeah so uh, non-discrimination thing and that was that was idea just to make ukraine so safe so good for all people including of course lgbt people that all ukrainians can live in ukraine in peace and happiness without leaving the country for other countries for searching a better life yeah.